Hi, I'm Alex. I'm the manager of the Whiskey Exchange in London's glistening Covent Garden. We're here with uh, Simon and Franchi from Simply Whiskey. Hello. Hello there, how are you? Thank you for tuning in. We're here to talk about Burns Night mm. and what it might mean to you and to me and to you. Um, but I know the most important thing in Burns Night for me is the whiskey. And you gentlemen look thirsty, so let's do something about that. Great. Alrighty. Thank you very thank much. You, very much. <laughs> you are welcome. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I'll have, I'll have two. <laughs> what we have, marvellous, is the fabulous Aaron Quarter Cask. This is from the Aaron Distillery, based on the Isle of Arran. Um, not the youngest distillery in Scotland, um, but certainly not the oldest. Only 25 years old, uh, the distillery. And this is the refresh of the Bothy. That's right? exactly right, the quarter cask. So it's been in a smaller cask, um, which kind of intensifies the aging a little bit. Um, oh yeah, about their 25th birthday this August. So quarter cask, quarter century. Lovely choice, Alex. Nice, yes, nice. I see what you did there, Simon. That's marvellous. And right. this is bottled at what percent is this? This is this cast is, strength. Uh, it is cast strength, 56.3, so but quite yeah, powerful. approachable on the nose. Very much so. I'm getting loads of beautiful soft fruits. Uh, it's elegant, it's... Uh, Creamy. Definitely, bit of toffee, lovely stuff. I get that pear drop. Yeah. A lovely way to start a Burns Night celebration. Burns Night celebration, Simon. So. Uh, raises my first question. So what is Burns Night? What does it mean to you? What does it mean to you? What is Burns? Mm, a very good question. You want to say something? Oh, yeah. no, for, please. Me, for me, Burns Night encapsulates everything about Scotland in the, one, in the one thing. But on top of that, it's the perfect time. It's the perfect time for a party. Because Christmas is long but forgotten. Right? Hug me nay, you can't remember. Right? New Year's Day, you want to forget. Yeah. What else you got to look forward to? The Easter holidays, mm -hmm. the summer holidays, they're too far away. No, end of January, 25th of January, Robert Burns' birthday, time for a party. Yes, we do love a party, that much is true, and I'm sure you do as well, but of course Burns Night is a celebration of the life and work of Robert Burns, Scotland's national poet, a fine songwriter, and if I may say, uh, perhaps the greatest Scot that ever lived, even greater than Billy Connolly and Alexander Graham Bell, but thank you for the laughs and the telephones, guys. Now we know that Burns was born in Alloway and Ayr in South West Scotland in 1759, but sadly he died at the tender age of 37 in uh, 1796. Not that so sad though. Sadly. Well, well in, that, in those 37 years, let's not forget, in those 37 years he wrote nearly 200 Burns poems and, nearly over, and over 400 Burns songs and he didn't start writing his first poem until he was 15 years old. So he had 22 years of an incredibly prolific period where he wrote all the, all the works that he did. That's and, extraordinary. Yeah, and let's not forget, on top of that, on top of that, he was a tenant farmer, mm -hmm. so he had to tend the fields. And towards the later part of his life, he was an excise man. Ooh. But we don't talk about that. No. No, no, no. no. Well, I mean, Burns was a complex character. I mean, it means a lot of things to different people, you know, Burns Knight and Robert Burns. I think um, if you were to ask, you know, what Burns Knight means to us, um, I guess, you know, I grew up around the corner from Burns Cottage um, in Alloway and I used to pass the, the cottage twice a day on route to and from school and so I, I guess I feel a bit of a personal connection to Burns. Um, it's probably worth touching upon, you know, why Burns is still relevant, you know, all this time on, you know, more than 250 years later, we're still celebrating Burns Night. And I think perhaps, I mean, we don't celebrate Shakespeare's birthday, or do you? No, listen, well, that's the thing. What is it about Burns? The French, the French don't celebrate Baudelaire. No. No, the, the Irish don't celebrate Yeats. That's the English, the English, Shakespeare. the English don't celebrate Shakespeare, do they? No. In fact, who knows when Shakespeare was born? Do you know when Shakespeare was born? 23rd of April. No, not 23rd of April. Oh, okay. Did you Google that? In fact, <laughs> if you guys know, put it in the comments, if you know Shakespeare's birth, Put it in the comments, let us know. I'm willing to be disproved. <laughs> but but we know when Burns was born, 25th of January. Yeah, so whatever you have whatever you have planned for your Burns night, and I hope it's gonna be a good one. Um, I guess the question that maybe is in your mind, it's certainly in mind, you know, why are we still celebrating? And I think it's because um, I guess it's quite unique in how ordinary he was. You know, he never really lost touch with the everyday 
you know, aspects of life. Focusing on the simple things, relishing and writing about those things that I guess we can all associate with as part of the human experience. And of course, his writing still means as much to us now as it did then. And these values, these principles, I think, still resonate. Uh, for example, social and political change, speaking up for others, preserving nature, go Greta. Greta would love Greta. Right? Freedom, equality, love of life. You know, when Burns said, we're all jock tams and bairns, a man's a man for all that, what I think um, is that, I guess no matter your race, colour or creed, we can all associate with that, you know? It's all about inclusivity. That, and exactly, exactly. I totally agree. And that's the other thing, that what it means to me, it's about inclusivity. It's what Scotland is, it's an inclusive place. We love Burns, and when I say we, the Scottish people, we love Burns. But we want, that's not enough for us, we want everybody else to love Burns. Right, so it doesn't matter where you're from, your race, colour or creed, we want you to love Burns as much as we do. So and I guess I feel there's a bit of a barrier, you know, we wish you could be here with us, we don't know where you are, we'd like to know where you are. Got no, you should be here. <laughs> no matter where you are, doubtless on Burns Night you'll be celebrating Scottish culture, art, poetry, food and music. Oh, talking about food. Talking about food, we're having our first whiskey. I guess this would be the starter yeah. for our Burns Night yeah. experience, yeah. wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. What about if we had a little starter? Let's mix it up. That could work, game. that could work. So what I've got here is an oat cake with Isle of Mulled Cheddar. Isle of Mulled Cheddar. Right, mm. so we've went, we've, we're keeping it on the islands. Yeah. Yeah? Thank you very much. And I suppose the idea about this one is that the experience should be greater than the sum of their parts, right? Mm -hmm. The cheese is fantastic. The whiskey is incredible. Mm -hmm. But let's see, if we put the two together, do we get something else? Yeah. I mean, tasting, tasting whiskey with food is always quite an interesting one. I've been fortunate enough to do a lot of it uh, in my career. I, I always find... <laughs> you can tell Thank that. you. Thank you, yeah. <laughs> this sort of thing takes a lot of work. <laughs> Um, I always find that a, a little sip of the whiskey, a little bite of the food, a little sip of the whiskey, so that you really get your mouth used to all of the flavours. Okay, okay. Listen, I'm willing to try that. Usually yeah. I just throw it in. It doesn't throw it in. Really yeah, well, that no, is an alternative no, way of doing things. No rhyme, no which reason. Which is just as bad. But, so whiskey first. Little sip of whiskey. Little sip of whiskey. Yeah. Well, I've only got a little sip left. Yeah. So I'm enjoying it so much. Good stuff. Do you mind if I put an ed a word in edge with you? Please do. Yeah. So, I mean, I want to focus on you guys, you know. I mean, what will you be doing on Burns Night? Do you have any courses planned? I mean, you don't have to stay with cockalooky soup for the starter. You can mix up a little bit and it's fun to do so. But really, the reason you're all watching today is probably not just, I mean, I'm not going to assume it's Franchi and I. Mm. You're on the Whiskey Exchange, so you're probably interested in drink, Ishki Bay. How about a wee bit of poetry before we carry on to open up the evening, so to speak? Mm. What do you well, think? We could I think, do. I think that's a fantastic idea. Yeah. Do you know any poems? Oh, one or two. Okay. May I? Well, seeing as we're in the whiskey exchange and we're drinking some fabulous Scotch drink, it seems only natural that we do Scotch drink. Robert Burns's poem. Love to the Ishka Bay. Right, I'll make space yeah. for you, Oh, and you've got some I barley for barley me. For you. This is what it's made from. What you are certainly going to need. Though. I'm going to have a wee bit more of that. Aye, right, some more Aaron. Thank you very much. Alrighty. So. Scotch drink. Give him strong drink until he wink. I'll start that again. Give him strong drink until he wink that's sinking in despair. And liquor good to fire his blood that's pressed with grief and care. Then let him bows with deep carouse with bumpers flowing over till he forgets his love of debts and minds his grief no more. Solomon's Proverb 31, chapter 6, verse 7. Let other poets raise a fracas about vines and wines and drunken backass and crabbit names and stories rackass and great ur lug. I sing the juice Scotch Birkin Macas in. Glass or jug. O oh, thee, my muse, get all Scotch drink. Whether through wimpling worms thou jink or richly brown remur the brink in glorious fame. Entire, inspire me till I lisp and wink to sing thy name. Let husky wheats the hawks adorn, and ain't set up their honey horn, and peas and beans a teen or more perfume thy plain. Leaves me on thee, John Barleycorn, thou king of grain. On thee, aft Scotland chows or could, the supple scones, the whale of food, are tumbling in the boiling flood with kale and beef. 
But when thy pour thine own heart's blood, there thou shines chief. Food fills the way and keeps us leaving, though life's a gift no worth receiving, when heavy dragged with pain and grieving, but oil be thee, the wheels of life go down how screaming we rattle in glee. Slanjava. Very nice. Thank you, you very, thank you very much. much. That was fantastic. Well thank done, you. That's <laughs> all right. Cheers. Well, a lovely poem for a lovely whiskey. Lovely poem for a lovely whiskey indeed. Well, I mean, that's what gone down an absolute treat. Yeah. Would you like to try uh, something a little different? Yes, please. Oh, yes, please. Right. Interested to know what you are tasting at home, uh, whether you are tasting along with us. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, how old is this one, Alex? This one uh, is 15 years old. It's a wee bit young, a wee bit uh, young? small. <laughs> it's young, it's not too <laughs> young. Oh, it's a bit small. Small for a 15 year old. <laughs> it's small for a 15 small year old. 15 it's year young old. for a 15 well, year old. Listen, thank you so much. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's an absolute pleasure. It's yeah. wonderful to have you guys here. So 15 year old whiskey, what is it? This oh, is God. from uh, the Speyside Distillery Ben Romick. This uh, particular whiskey was voted by you guys, by our customers, uh, the best whiskey, best Scotch whiskey, best whiskey for 2020. Um, fantastic, done blind out of six whiskies that were chosen. This is the one that came out on top. I love it. Ben Romick is, uh, it's kind of an unashamedly old fashioned. It's sort of trying to make whiskey the way it was a uh, hundred years ago. So although it is a space cider, it has a wonderful little trace of smoke to it. Well, I've had the Ben Romick 100 proof, which I loved. Mm -hmm. um, I it haven't tried stuff. this one, but obviously you have a great taste. So here's to you guys for judging this, your yeah, whiskey thank of the year. You. Oh, there's a beautiful treacle note on this. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm getting lots of wonderful spice as well. Is that kind of beautiful kind of Speyside smoke. So it's not yeah. like your Isla smoke, which is very medicinal and um, salty and coastal. This is much more a kind of, how would I describe it? I, I would say a kind of sooty smoke that you get from mm. Speyside. It's lovely really stuff. Nice. Yeah, really, really, really nice. good. Really, really good. So this is kind of like, what you would have this with your main course, This no? is what I would have with my main yeah. course if I was Beautiful. to be uh, pairing it with uh, uh, food. Well, oh, can I make nice. a suggestion then? Please. How about we have a haggis, given it's the Burns Night celebration, how about, yes. and if you'd like, we can address the haggis. I think that sounds like a brilliant idea. It's okay. a great idea. Right, let's do it. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. okay. Haggis? haggis? Ah. ah, yeah, yeah. Aye, ah, um, about that. So, we had a haggis. Okay. Um, it's but a very good one too. I, yeah, it's award winning. Come award on, winning. Up. Yeah. But um, it's the Kinder's oven's not working. So we had to think on our feet. And we've got you we've got you a packet of haggis flavoured crisps. Fine. Maggie's. Not a problem. Right. Again, it's as much your Burns night as it is it ours, so whatever you've got at home, it doesn't matter, enjoy yourself. I'm going to address this pack of haggis crisps, um, but I would like you to pipe it in. Uh, Forget about it, doesn't matter. Have you got a knife? Um, Fine, no. not a problem. Okay, doesn't matter. Right, anyway, here we go. Address to the haggis. Crisps. Crisps. <laughs> doodly doodly doo. <laughs> Fair for your honest sonsy face, great chief to know the pudding race, a bin the may attack your place, pinch tripe or therm will lie you wordy o'a grace, as langs my arm. The groaning trencher there you fill, your herdies like a distant hill, your pin was helped to mend the mill in time of need, and then through the pores your juice distill, like amber bead. His knife, see rustic labour dicht, and Cut you up with ready slick, send to your gutting angels, brick like only did, and then oh, what a glorious sicht, warm, reeking, rich. Then horn for horn they stretch and strive, deal take the hindmost on they drive, till all their wills will kite alive or bid like thrive, <laughs> and all good men be slight to thrive. <clears throat> but think it hums. Is here the o'er oh, his French ragout, or olio that would stow a sou, or fricassee would mack or spew for perfect dinner, look down with steer and scorn for view and sick a dinner? Poor deal, see him over his trash, as speckles as withered rash, his spindle shank a goop what lashes neither knit, through bloody flood or field to dash! 
Oh, I want fit. <laughs> but mark the, the rustic tiger spare. The trembling earth preserves his tread. Clap in his wally knee a blade. He'll mark it whistle. And legs and arms and heads all sned like taps of trissel. Your powers what mark mankind your care and dish them out their billow fair. Oh, Scotland wants these skinking wear like jobs and luggies. And so if you give her grateful prayer, give her a haggis. Whatever you are, to the haggis, or in this case to the haggis crisps, slander on. Slander on. Slander on. To the haggis. <laughs> to the haggis. To the haggis crisps. Crisps. <laughs> Do you know what's great about these is uh, they're suitable for vegetarians. <laughs> so if you at home you are a vegetarian and you've got a real need for the flavour of uh, sheep. Sheep is awful. Is, sheep's awful. Yes. This is the place to go. This is the one. This is the place to go. Marvellous. That was fantastic, Simon. Thank you. No problem. That was very, very good indeed. Um, I think they're going pretty well with the whiskey too. Yeah. What do yeah. you think? Yeah, very nice. There's the spice, the cracked black pepper. And the, the, the black pepper and the haggis there, yeah. yeah. It's going beautifully, going beautifully. Would you like to try uh, a little some, um, ooh, tell me something. Okay, yeah. we, we've heard what Burns is to um, generally for other people. What does it mean for you guys? I mean, can you tell me some experiences that you may have had? <laughs> something you, uh, may have happened to you at Burns oh, night? Something you've done? Many. How long have we got? Francie, would you like to Kayleigh dance down memory lane? Simon, there's nothing I would like more than to do a gay garden down memory lane. Right, well, you, I, mate. I guess we're going to have to I'll go back. Lead. Shall I lead? Oh, fine, OK. We're going to have to go back to the beginning to when we met because uh, Burns Night's all about remembrance and actually um, our friendship was cemented by our first Burns Night. It was, it was. So um, Simon and I first met uh, in 2006 in a bar uh, just off the Falcon Square in it, called Albanac. Mm, right? Yes. Scottish bar. Uh, and it was a fantastic bar. We loved yeah, that bar. We used to frequent it often, many times a week, yes. actually. Yes, we uh, in fact, so much so that um, the people that worked there actually thought we were staff. So it just seemed obvious that when Alban and I were doing their first Burns Night mm -hmm. in the January of 2007, that they would ask the two Scots guys that never left the bar if they could host it. Aye, we'd never hosted a no, Burns night before. I mean, you learn Burns in, in school, primary school, you know, in Scotland at least. But we came out of retirement to host this Burns night, and um, I mean, it went quite well. Well, it went more than quite well. We're still doing it. Well, I mean, so we've been lucky to host Burns nights all over the world. Um, and so I guess, you know, some of the, the more memorable experiences, for me at least, I mean, there are many. Um, actually, we hired a helicopter to fly to Monaco on one occasion to do uh, uh, a Burns night for... Um, uh, His Royal Highness Prince Albert of Monaco. Yeah, that's um, a name drop, isn't it? Who else was there? Who else was in the well, audience? His friends. Oh. Um, I'm not <laughs> intending to be showy, I'm just telling you <laughs> what <laughs> happened. Although I do remember, um, do you remember the story, well, the security? Oh, oh, yeah, 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 I remember that, I remember that. Okay, so, um, as Simon says, so we, we were invited to do a Burns Night one, a couple actually, we've done a couple there. Yeah, three. So, well, okay, three. So, um, <laughs> I didn't want to see. Right, anyway, so we were invited along, and on this occasion we were in the Hermitage Hotel. Have you been? I have, you've yeah, stayed there, place, right? Many Whenever places, you visit many Monte Carlo, yeah, it's the only you've place got to stay at the Hermitage. So, it's, it was uh, Prince Albert's five star hotel, the Hermitage Hotel, and we were in the Grand Ballroom. Okay, so uh, the, the, the meal was created and devised by the Michelin star chef, Michael Smith, who was at the Three Chimneys mm -hmm, at mm -hmm. that point. He's now got his own restaurant on Sky, right. who I want, to, I want to check it out. Well, we can. But, right, so Michael Smith devised this incredible seven-course seven menu, okay? And it was time for the Haggis Address, and we're just about to go on backstage, and Michael comes out, because he's the chef, so he's going to be piped on with me, and he turns to me and he says, Franchi, is there any chance that you could use my knife to address the haggis? Fair enough. Ah, fair enough, right? Mm -hmm. I thought, well, Michael, you're the chef, you're the guy that's created you know, the incredible cuisine that we're eating tonight. It would be an honour for me to address haggis with your knife. So he puts his knife on the trencher there and we're, we're walking out and we're, we're getting piped to it and we're going round the room and then we end up at the top table. So we're standing at the top table. There's me to my right. There's Princess Charlene of Monaco, yes, and then to her right, there's His Serene Highness, 
Prince Albert the Second of Monaco. Yes, I was behind you. You were, you were, uh, you were, uh, you were behind me. So, uh, as you know, Simon's just done the poem. There's a point. So we start off fair for your honest son's face, etc., etc. And then there's a point where you go, his knife, see rustic labour dicht, and you pull the knife out and you stab the haggis and you trench it and the gushing entrails and all that, right? So we get to that point, right? We get to that point where it's his knife, see rustic labour dicht, and I grab the knife off the trencher. And I go to pull the knife out of the sheath. It was in a sheath. His knife. Nothing. His knife. Nothing. I thought maybe my hands are sweaty. His knife. Nothing. I was like, oh no, this isn't working. So I think, I goes, what am I going to do? I look for the closest knife that's available. Mm. Right? <laughs> yeah. And it happens to be Princess Charlene's butter knife. Just in front of me. I can see it out my eye. It's the first knife I see. So what do I do? I lunge forward and grab the knife. It's at that point that I notice the security that are surrounding the restaurant. <laughs> they lunge forward. And I thought, this is my last Burns night ever. This might be my last day ever. I thought I was getting double tapped in the back of the head by a, a, you know, a, a mono, monoguesque security guard. But fortunately, fortunately, it wasn't Prince Albert's first Burns night. He waved them off. I picked up the knife. Well, I already had it. I stabbed up the haggis. And then I gave Princess Charlene a, this haggis-covered butter knife back. Um, well, I mean, and I, but but I, I lived to tell yeah. the tale. I thought, I honestly thought that was my last one, wasn't it? Thank, thank goodness that, uh, I mean... Who would you have got to be standing beside you? <laughs> it's not always been like that. We've, we've actually been very lucky also to host events, um, I guess for a different kind of royalty, whiskey royalty, although we love lots of whiskies, but um, I do have a bit of a soft spot for the Bovenny. We went to the distillery to host um, a Burns night for the ladies and gentlemen who work at the distillery to make their... I remember running round the table at, at one point and the, that, that, um... So, I mean, yeah, yeah so many... Tam and Shanta around the table. I took, a, I took my kid's horse. Remember yes. the wee horse? I took, you know, the wee hobby horse thing? <laughs> yes. I took that yes. and I was running round the table in the visitor centre in Balvenie. I'm, David yeah. Stewart sitting at the top, me running around with a hobby horse. Table. I am hoping um, you'd had a couple of drams at that. Oh, yeah. Francie yeah. likes to be the centre of attention. No oh. surprise, why not, yeah. right? Um, actually, one me? other... Yeah. <laughs> one other memory. Um, we did an event for Facebook last year, um, which was great fun. But actually, if I think about it, the best Burns Night experiences, uh, for me at least, maybe also for you, is just relaxing having fun with some friends, getting the whiskies in, having, you know, whatever. You've seen us with some cheese and then obviously with some, you know, haggis crisps, fine, whatever. Um, you don't have to observe all the traditions. You can mix it up and just, um, you know, have a laugh, spend some time with friends, come together. That's it. That's it, Simon. With friends. Some of the greatest um, Burns Nights are with friends. I had one with my friend Tommy. He hosted his Burns Night and um, it was a flat that he just moved. I see a flat. It was more a porter cabin, <laughs> right? So it, it was a one bedroom porter cabin type thing. And he invited, there was 15 or 16 of us there. <laughs> and his, his beautiful wife, Shanina, is from Argentina. And her brother was over and he just arrived. And we made him do a Burns poem. So there was 15, 16 of us. Listen, the poems were rubbish, Yeah. right? The yeah. poems were rubbish. The food was incredible. The whiskey was even better. The cigars got involved. It didn't end well, I'm going to be honest, it didn't end well, but it was a fantastic experience and that's one for me that, that stays in my heart. And so we'd like to hear what your experiences have been. Um, I know you're going to be celebrating your Burns Night shortly, I uh, hope you've got something exciting planned, but comment, let us know what it is that you have planned, that'd be lovely. Now, you are tasting whiskey as you're watching, right? Mm. I mean, you're not just... You well, know, sitting I mean, there without a dram. <laughs> I, mean, I, so. I think, Simon, you're absolutely right. And if you are, then you have to be keeping up with us because we are now on to number three, I okay, think. Okay, very nice. We have something uh, quite special here, I think, to try, which is... Thank you very much. There you go, sir. Thank you very much. <laughs> Don't you worry, man. That's the bigger right. one. Um, a bit of a, yeah. Here we have something. Oh, what's that? This is very exciting stuff. So this is from Elements of Isla, which is from our sister company, Elixir Distillers. Mm -hmm. So you might be familiar with their, uh, their uh, peat bottling. Yes. Yeah, indeed. This one is peat and sherry. So you remember the peat. Tasting. I think I've got peat foolproof at home. I've got a couple of bottles of that. So imagine what they've done with this is they've taken that, 
yeah. peak foolproof. And they have moved it into a first fill Oloroso sherry cask for three and a half to four years. And so you've gone from peat and now you've got peat and sherry. This is basically Ron Seal whiskey. Okay, Don't I see exactly you've given me the... What it says on the label. I see you've given me the perfect measure. I've never had this whiskey. I was on the Isla.com website the other day checking out the, you know, the, the research. whole... Research, was it research? Well, I mean, the thing is, maybe you guys feel the same, but at this point with the whiskey exchange, you trust them to release whatever they release and you just buy it because you know it's going to taste great. So. Mm. Um, hats off sure. to you. On Burns Night, um, I'm trying a whiskey, which oh. I think Billy has described as a velvet kiss with a glove or something. Is that right? <laughs> uh, an, an iron fist in a velvet glove. Right, oh, well, yeah. to you, wherever you are, this one's for you. Yeah. Slange. I'm, when, I, when I nose this, yeah. I'm smelling, are you familiar with the Polish sausage Cabanos? It's a smoked sausage, smoked okay. pork sausage going uh -huh. on here. It is getting lots of that. But you get that sweetness from the sherry. You get the smokiness. This is beautiful. Is Ooh. that your go-to sausage, is it, the Cabanos? I'm quite a fan, I have to say, <laughs> okay. of the uh, Cabanos. So okay. I am quite a fan. But uh, personally, you know, I'm not fussy. Sausages are sausages. They're always fine. <laughs> now listen, um, here we are, obviously, oh. we're... You know, we're well, is this a dessert whiskey? Why? Do you have something in mind? Well, Ooh, well yeah, I, yeah, I was thinking, I was so thinking, we've had, we, had, we had the R in, yeah. we had the cheese and the oat cakes, yes. right, as yeah, our yeah. starter. Yeah, delicious. We had it. the Ben Roma 15, what the heck? world's best whiskey, yeah. right, yeah, voted yeah. by you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Haggis. Crisps. Crisps. Yeah. We should have a dessert. Okay. Great. I'm sure you've got something very nice planned, yeah. Franchi, uh -huh. given that you uh -huh. presented <laughs> two lovely dishes already. Oh. I have, I have. Some half-eaten... <laughs> Caramel. Tonics, caramel lovely. wafers. Well, these are my favourites. Tonics, caramel wafers. Oh, so you, oh, you have a wee one. <laughs> mm. It's tonics, caramel wafer. I'm getting toffee, yeah. chocolate. Chocolate. Mm. I'm getting, yeah. There's a bit of wafer in there. A bit of wafer. I think that's going to go beautifully. Milk definitely. chocolate though, I mean, it's, it's yeah. definitely milk no, yeah, chocolate. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely it? milk chocolate. Yeah, okay, and then... <laughs> it's going to go beautifully. That's the wrong, oh, hold on, that was the wrong way, wasn't it? Okay. So sip first. Sip first, the bite, then the bite, bite, and then another yeah. sip. Okay. I'm wondering how this is going to go with a smoked pork sausage, but we will yeah. see. Well, listen, uh, spoiler alert, I've tried it. The two do not work together, but that's okay. Well, I, the, you know. It's a personal taste, it's that's a fine. Taste. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Opinions, everyone's got one here. Yeah. <laughs> mmm. Mmm. Right, so experiment, have a bit yeah, of fun. It doesn't work straight away, does it? But then I'm going to add the whiskey to the bit, the wafer. See if that helps. It doesn't. Mm -mm. No. <laughs> this is the thing with food and whiskey pairing, is the worst thing that can happen is you have some food and some whiskey separate from each other afterwards. You know, that's all right, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it doesn't yeah. Work, that, okay, that yeah. Good. Well, that was that, actually. Yeah. You know what? Actually, yeah. the finish isn't bad. Sort of bringing out some toffee notes. It's sort toffee, of... toffee covered, toffee smoked popcorn. Oh, hello. Yeah, that sounds nice. Yeah, well, I've made it. Have you? Yeah, that I've sounds, made it. That sounds yeah, like that nice. quite a pudding. That, that right. was uh, that was something else. That that's what I, that's what that sounds like a great idea, and what I would match with this whiskey. Well, Alex, this has been so much fun. Thank you very much for inviting us down. It is an absolute pleasure, and thank you so much, guys, for coming down, giving us your. Uh, experiences, your fantastic poetry, that was... Sorry about the mess. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> you know, I'll clear it up later. Sorry about the mess. And uh, thank you also to Sikindra and Raj, owners of the Whiskey Exchange. Um, that reminds me, have you guys heard of the Bard of Bengal? Oh, you're talking about Rabindranath Tagore, the guy yes. that wrote the Indian National Anthem. I am, the very ah, same. Okay, yeah, um, he yeah. was born a little time after Burns, about 100 and, well, 102 years later, and he is said to be inspired by Burns. Burns has obviously inspired many people around the world. And uh, Rabindranath Tagore um, wrote a song um, called Parano Shai Dainakota. Um, Parano Shai Dainakota. I yeah. didn't know you spoke Hindi. A little bit. Oh, I hear it there. I dabble. Nice um, yeah. Parano Shai Dainakota. And this was a. Uh, Parano Shai Dainakota. Nice. Uh, nice. A, a response to Old Lang Syne. Um, if you haven't heard it, check it out. I mean, obviously, as we near the end of our celebration with you here today, thank you so much for joining. 
Thank you. We normally have Old Lang Syne, uh, a time um, for us all to raise our glasses and... So a final toast for the evening, I think. Yes, yeah. maybe uh, to you, to your Burns Night celebration. Um, to Robert Burns. Yes. And to all those that he has inspired and continues to inspire. Indeed, and uh, in Hindi, I believe it would be Chiars. C H I Y A R S, excuse the pronunciation, Chiars. Chiars. And Slanjavar. 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 Mm. Oh. What a great whiskey to finish mm. on. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Delicious.